Let's start with a question. Have you ever pushed a heavy box across a room? It might not feel like it, but when you do that, you're performing work. Not the homework kind, but the kind that involves physics. To understand how work happens, we need to talk about some key terms. Displacement, force, energy, and efficiency. These scientific ideas might sound complicated, but they're all around us, shaping how we interact with the world every day. First, let's define displacement. It's just a fancy way of saying how far something moves and in what direction. Imagine sliding that box three meters across the floor. That's displacement. But moving the box doesn't happen on its own. You need a force, which is simply a push or pull. If you push the box with 50 newtons of force, you're using your muscles to make that movement happen. Now, here's where it gets interesting. When a force causes displacement, you've done work. Work happens when the force you apply moves something in the direction of the force. If you push the box straight ahead and it moves forward, that's work. But if you push hard and the box doesn't budge, no work is done, at least in the physics sense. Work is measured in joules, the same unit used to measure energy. Speaking of energy, let's break that down. Energy is what makes work possible. It's like the fuel behind every movement, whether it's chemical energy in your body or electrical energy powering a motor. When you push the box, your body uses stored chemical energy to create the force. That energy transfers to the box, getting it to move. Once the box is in motion, it has kinetic energy, the energy of movement. But not all systems are equally good at turning energy into work. That's where efficiency comes in. Efficiency tells us how much of the energy you put in actually gets turned into useful work. For example, if you're sliding the box on a smooth floor, most of your effort goes into moving it, high efficiency. But if you're pushing the same box on a rough carpet, a lot of your energy is lost to friction, so the system is less efficient. The relationship between force, work, and displacement pops up in simple systems all the time. Take a ramp for instance. Let's say you're loading a heavy suitcase into a car. Lifting it straight up takes a lot of force and effort. But using a ramp reduces the force needed because the ramp spreads the work over a longer displacement. The work done is the same, getting the suitcase into the car, but the ramp makes it more efficient by reducing the force required. Everyday examples of these principles are everywhere. Opening a door, you're applying a force over a displacement and the hinge system helps you do the work efficiently. Riding a bike. You're using energy from your body to create a force on the pedals, which moves the bike forward. Even walking upstairs involves work, as you use force to overcome gravity and displace your body upward. Understanding force, work, energy, and efficiency isn't just about physics. It's about seeing the hidden systems that make everyday life possible. Whether you're pushing a box, riding a bike, or simply opening a door, these concepts are at work helping you move through the world.